Decent and affordable housing is one of the basic needs of the individual, family and the community at large. As a prerequisite to the survival of man, housing ranks second to food. Housing, observers see, has a profound influence on the health, efficiency, social behavior, satisfaction and the general welfare of the community. These essential needs also reflect the cultural, social and economic value of the society. The importance of housing in every life and national economy, no doubt, is enormous. The astronomical increase in population and urban dwelling has created a lot of pressure and social services, especially housing. The housing sector plays a critical role in the development of an economy and it is one of the most important basic needs of man. It is an obligation for any government to provide affordable accommodation to its citizens. It is in the fulfillment of this obligation that the Loans Board was established in 1924 as African Staff Housing Scheme and became operational in 1954 and up to the eve of Nigeria's independence. Its operations were still confined to the federal territory of Lagos. The board had several heads, which include Mrs. Oriagba FAT, 1973 to 2001, secretary to the board. Dr. Mrs. Okuosa AC, 2001 to 2005, secretary to the board. Mr. Meiji Mohammed, 2005 to 2007, secretary to the board. Until July 2007, when Dr. Hanato Fika became director and secretary of the board. Since the establishment of the board in 1924 to date, it is on record that the numbers of beneficiaries has risen to about 300% in spite of various challenges facing the board. And this is because Dr. Fika knows that when workers are motivated through ownership of affordable houses, they will perform optimally and contribute more to national development. The Federal Integrated Staff Scheme, in fact, is a wonderful scheme from the federal government, especially from the Buari administration. Thank, Thank you, you Buari. President Say Buari. Buari. Say bye -bye. Thank you. Dr. Hanato Fika enumerates what it takes to be a beneficiary. You must be a federal government worker, a public servant, a federal public servant, before you access our loan. And in trying to access our loan, you must collect a form from the board. And this form we charge 1,000 Naira. Why do we charge 1,000 Naira? Because we have found out that Public servants will come. Today they will collect a form. They will not fill it. Next year they will collect another form. They won't fill it. So they, yeah. So it becomes a waste on us. So the board, we put a proposal to the board to approve that, in order to, you know, stop all these excesses of collection of forms, let us charge one thousand naira. So if you pay 1,000 Naira, I don't think you'll come back again to collect another form. So you must buy this form from the board. And there are other informations attached to the form. You have to attach um, your employment letter. You have to attach um, an evidence that you are a confirmed officer. And then um, your ministry will now endorse all these forms and it is sent here and we begin to process your application. And at the end of the day, you get the loan, depending on the amount of money that you have. There are some group of public servants who would want to, who would apply today, and they want to be paid tomorrow. So what happens to the other civil servant who applied day before yesterday? and is waiting for his turn. Oh, the Federal Housing Loans Board itself was the pioneer institution of the federal government to work towards ensuring and enhancing both affordability and ownership of houses by civil servants. 
Um, there is nothing in this world so degrading, uh, so devastating, and so diminishing in terms of our lives as public servants, as retiring after 35 years of service, or after 60 years of age, to retire to a rented accommodation. It's the pride of every civil servant, it's the pride of all of us uh, to retire to our homes, at least to have shelter over our heads. That will be the, our own pride, that will be the pride of our families, and that will be pride of our associates and the society in general. So the federal uh, government staff housing loans board has, uh, has done a lot, uh, particularly in keeping to the tempo of the public service reform beginning massively from 2003 up to somewhere around 2013. Up till 1974, workers' entitlement to loans under the staff housing scheme were only reflected in the scheme's regulations, but not backed by any law or decree, although paragraph 11 of the Federal Government Staff Housing Board decree gives the board the power to amend any regulation with the approval of the Commissioner for Establishments, which the board wrote on, where it recommended to the Commissioner that an applicant's entitlement for a land loan should be increased to two times his annual salary, as against the maximum of one year salary, and that the repayment period should correspondingly be extended to 10 years instead of the present five years. Uh, a number of initiatives were carried out by the Federal Staff Housing Loans Board uh, through the Federal Mortgage Bank, through the regular budgetary provisions of the Federal Government, the annual budgetary provision, etc. And it made life easy. A number of civil servants went into those soft loans in paying for their houses as owner-occupiers. But it was not taking the service to the desired land. Uh, if you see the demand, the population of service is very large. And if we were allowed to go uh, and to continue to move the way it was provided between 2003 and 2013, uh, a good number of officers would still languish without accessing the required funds to have their own homes. The board, over the years, has been able to give intervention fund to alleviate the sufferings of workers. During the demonetization program, public servants procured houses from the federal government, so they needed this change to uplift their houses. And one very important thing that uh, I have been able to do during this, uh, uh, these years that I have been here, you recall ASO Savings and other mortgage banks gave civil servants loans to purchase their houses that were sold to them by federal government. And we noticed the difficulties that they were going through. At the end of the month, they had no salary. Sometimes they even had to, you know, look for funds elsewhere to be able to service their loans. I put up a memorandum to my board to say that let us buy back the loans, the housing loans that were given to civil servants at 9.5% with other hidden charges so that we will pay for it on their behalf, acquire their uh, certificates, and then these loans will be given to them at 3% interest rate without hidden charges. And we have been able to do a lot. And then the second group of civil servants who uh, bought houses under the Presidential Implementation Committee, the board also paid for all their houses in all the states of the Federation, which means that anywhere that you go in this country, we have a property. And until you liquidate your loan, that property is still the property of the federal government of Nigeria under the Housing Loans Board. In the housing sector over the years, it has become clear that there is a need for the private sector to support, especially in the area of finance. This 
is the premise upon which the unique selling point to capture those who are not government workers with the aim of ensuring no one is left out. Go to Lagos State today, you'll find out that the Federal Government of Housing Loans Board has facilitated quite a number of houses for public servants. And this, of course, we did not do it alone. We had partnership with the Federal Housing Authority, with the military, with the Lagos State uh, Government. And we had a synergy where they built houses and then we paid for these houses for staff and uh, as a loan. And then we deducted it from their salary. Record shows that Nigeria has housing deficit of about 18 million and the need for the government of the nation to ensure affordable accommodation to its citizens irrespective of their location in the country led to several efforts and policies which include Federal Integrated Staff Housing Program, FISH. I really informed that the FISH program has been given a reasonable uh, size of land and the FCT is also going to provide the infrastructure for that land. So that, that is going to go a long way in reducing the cost of houses ultimately to civil servants because the cost of the land is free and then the infrastructure is being provided by FCT. Unlike those estates that those uh, private developers that trans transfer the cost of the land and infrastructure all to the cost of the houses. It is also observed that the board is tremendously enjoying collaboration with private sector and other ministries, departments and agencies. I've also been working very closely with the Family Homes Fund and uh, I'm sure you know the Family Homes Fund was set up recently also to provide, as part of the National Housing Program, to provide uh, uh, affordable houses to the low income, especially low income classes, of which most of our civil servants fall under, you see. So we've been having very useful uh, discussion with the Family Homes Fund, and they are looking at how to help augment uh, the resources of the Federal Government Staff Housing Loans Board, you know, for mortgage, loan and so on, to civil servants. Apart from the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja and Lagos State, Dr. Hanatu Fika said the program is expanding its reach to other parts of the country. Very soon we are getting out of Abuja to get to other states to commission houses under the FISH program. Uh, Any time from now, we'll be heading towards uh, Calabar to commission an estate which we have found funded for members of the FISH program. And again, even under our core programs, we hope before the, the swearing in of Mr. President in May, we'll be commissioning about three estates, one in Kurudu, another one in Lugbe, and then two in Kuje. Computerization of the database of loans beneficiaries from the inception of the board in 1924, both in hard and soft copies to enable all stakeholders access needed information on their loans status is one of the innovations introduced by Dr. Hannah Tufika. So that our applicants can go on internet, that is via our website to log in and fill all the application forms. Once they fill the application forms, they will push it to our website in which we here in our, our office will receive the application, then we'll now download it, um, apply all the file numbers and we'll print and forward it or push it to registry so that the paper file can be opened while with the electronic one will be pushed to operation for them to process their loans. When this application comes, we send it to our ICT. They key in your name, you prop up automatically, which means that our system of data 
is very, very up to date. If you apply before we even process, you know, we send it to the I, 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 IPPI, uh, uh, ICT so that they can document your application and give you a file number. And when uh, your application is done with, it comes back to that ICT uh, data room also to take you on board as somebody whose application has been processed and you are now admitted as a loan beneficiary. One side is loan applicant and the other side is loan beneficiary. So that is how very effective our data is. Other programs introduced by the Executive Secretary into the scheme include partnership with developers at Workers' Advantage, Rent to Own Initiative, Home Renovation Loan in partnership with the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria. You know, with the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria, where we have a synergy on uh, renovation loan, we, in order to, you know, address the concerns of uh, federal public servants who always complained that uh, they are collecting, their the monies are being deducted from their salary by uh, Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria and they don't get anything out of it. We thought it is worth it for them before they retire to benefit from the uh, pool of funds under the NHF. Even though, if you take the aggregate of what a civil servant or a public servant, you know, pays into the NHF, it is not up to what they get as a renovation loan. We started it with the present government in 2015. And um, as we go into the uh, next level of the operations of this government, we are expanding the scope of that um, uh, renovation loan into uh, a scheme called rent to own. That is, uh, the, the FMBN will build a house, they will allocate it to a staff who is an entitled officer, and then they will begin to pay rent on their own home. By the time that they finish paying, they will own their own homes. And uh, already in 2016, between the two of us, we had agreed, you know, to work together so that we can soften the burden on uh, public uh, servants. Because uh, public servants may not, have the enough, may not have enough cash to pay for a determined rent. So what are we expected to do? The Federal Government Staff Housing Loans Board will move in so that uh, we will give them loan and we pay this loan directly to the Federal Mortgage Bank so that it will serve as the rent and then we deduct it from their salary. And I've been dealing with um, the loans board since 2009 and I'm bold to say that um, the woman at the end of affair, um, Ajay Anatua Damofika, is a mother who doesn't um, who doesn't shy away from um, saying the truth where it is necessary. She's a thoroughbred uh, professional who handles her job like every good uh, professional should do. Um, at every point in time, she reprimands anybody that has fallen um, short of um, their responsibility. And I'm bold to say that I've really learned from her. And um, if God permits, I still want to continue to learn from her. So far, so good. The relationship has been very uh, good and we're very productive. We've rendered um, like three, four estates within the last uh, 10 years. We've been able to provide like uh, 2,500 um, houses for federal civil servants through our immense uh, contribution. The amendment of the act that established the board, especially as it affects the increase of loan ceiling and tenure of the chief executive office of the board by the National Assembly, which is almost done with, is another effort being put in place by Dr. Hanato Fika to reposition the board. I have been in the forefront of ensuring that the law establishing the board has 
tenure five years and then renewable by another five years. So that whoever takes from me after I have done my 10 years will serve five years and then when they perform, you know, government only reappoints you according to all laws. When they see that you have performed, then that person will have two tours. And my prayer is, may my successor have the commitment and transparency that I have been able to show in the board. The board's budget allocation has scaled from 80 million naira to 2 billion naira in 2018 and 2019 to allow more public and civil servants benefit from the scheme, thanks to the Buhari-led administration. So we are moving to the next level with pride and with energy. We are having feelers if we are able to, you know, do our justification well, government may give us additional funding. The executive secretary rates the Buhari administration high in terms of housing for Nigeria. They are doing very well. If you care to read, and if you are very good at looking at budget performance, you would agree with me that the housing sector has gotten its fair share of the budget of uh, the country. I recall before this present administration came in, we had received as a budget zero allocation, not once, not twice. And we were expected to all lend a loan to public servants. If you are given zero in a budget, I think uh, the only thing you are expected to do is to close down temporarily the office that is charged with this uh, responsibility. But we are happy under the present uh, administration, um, the government of the day has been able to facilitate increased funding to us as their own corporate social responsibilities.